All right, let's go ahead and go over our review deck. We have suffix ed. Uh, ed means already happened. Suffix ing, ing, means happening now. Remember when I point to you, you repeat what I said. Suffix less means without. Suffix s means more than one. Line ul, acorn a, concrete e, whale wh, hose o, nest n, duck k, jar j, balloon v, dog d, goat g, equal e, fish f, hook U. Overalls O. Tooth U. Hat H. Octopus A. Tent T. Cube U. Box X. Cat K. Elephant E. Sheep E. Umbrella A. Uh. Turtle Er. Shark, sh, pig, p, icicle, i, dime, i, rabbit, er, sun, s, monkey, m, unicorn, u, yarn, y, vest, v, wagon, w, doctor, er, Zebra, z. Inch, i. Feather, z. Thimble, z. Cheese, ch. Kite, k. Anchor, k. Chef, sh. Rose, z. Cake, a. Apple, a. Bird, er. Quilt, qua. Star, r. Butter, er. Dollar, er. Horse, or. Bubble, bull. Staple, pull. Candle, dull. Bugle, goal. Bottle, tull. Ruffle, full. Sight words. The. Where. There. Some. Come. Was. Said. To. Of. Have. They. You. From. Together. Today. Something. Are, don't, love, for, tomorrow, do, to, who, into, should, there, what, were, won't, would, could, one, your, eight, been, Bush, does, fool, push, put, says, want. And that is our last one. Okay, we're kind of going a little bit quicker because we practice these almost just about every single day. So you guys should be getting quicker at reading and saying the sounds. All right, let's go ahead and go to our lesson. Here is our spelling words for this week. Make sure you practice these. We read through these on the first lesson this week. Um, so practice these and spelling, reading, practice your sentences. Okay, your sentences may or may not be on your test. Not really sure how I'm going to do that yet, but um, practice your spelling words. 
Okay, spelling sound review. Okay, just to go over some of the spellings and having you write it down. Um, number one, echo after me. When I put my hand flat, you say what the letter is. Ooh. L, I'm going to write a cursive L, final, L, L. Okay, those are cursive L, L. Those are cursive L's. Okay. Number two, S, S final, S, S. Remember our floss rule? Number three, or, O, R, or, er, E R A U hmm. That's a voiced T H O O O E E comma E E final E E Or actually I should have put E E comma E final Digraph EE, -E, but that's okay. Number nine, qua. Q, U. Review words. Number 10, class. C, L, A, S, S. Go ahead. Number 11, cork. C, O, R, K. Number 12, sick. C S, sorry, S I C K. Number thirteen, sight words, put. P U T. Fourteen, pool. P U L L. And number fifteen, fool. F U L L. Okay, here is your sentence. Echo the sentence after me. And remember, um, what do you need in the beginning of the sentence? A capital letter. You need your punctuations, um, period, which means either a period, question mark, or exclamation point. Um, yesterday, we wrote a dialogue sentence. Who remembers what a dialogue um, sentence needs? quotation marks, quotation marks, right? Um, so, and a dialogue is the exact words somebody is saying. So those exact words that somebody is saying, you put in the quotation marks. Okay. So, who remembers what it means when a word has an apostrophe S? An apostrophe S. Okay, an apostrophe S shows possession. Possession means it belongs to you or it belongs to them. Okay, so that is possession. Good, so now listen to this sentence. Tell, so listen to the sentence. Tell me where the bundle of wood is, said Tad's sister. Now we're going to write it on our paper. We need a capital T. But what am I forgetting? This is what Tad is saying. We need the quotation marks. We need quotation marks right there. Tell. So Tad is saying this. Tell me where. We need finger spaces. Where is W-H-E-R-E. -E, where the bundle. Watch how you. Write your B's and D's. That's D. This is a B. Bundle of wood is. Of. O F. Wood. Is. Now after this is, I'm going to put a comma. And then quotation marks. We put a comma because this is what he's saying. So we're going to say said 
said S A I D. Please don't mispronounce your or misspell your words. Tad, that's his name. Tad's. Oh, and I also did not read this correctly. Is Tad talking? Who is talking here? Who is saying, tell me where the bundle of wood is? Said Tad's sister. Is Tad talking? No, Tad is not talking. His sister is talking. Tad, you put an apostrophe S because that is his sister. That is Tad's sister. It is possession. Okay, that is Tad's sister. So tell me where the bundle of wood is, said Tad's sister. Who do you think she is talking to? She might be talking to Tad, right? Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead to our lesson for today. You're going to echo these words. And tell me what they all have in common. Handshake. Wood pile. And shellfish. All right, so what do they all have in common? They're all made up of two words, exactly. So who knows what we call a word that is made up of two other words? A compound word. So these are all compound words. A compound word is two words that come together to form one new word. Okay, let's look at these words and see how compound words are coded. Can anyone tell me where to divide the two words in this word? Right here. Where am I going to divide it? That's right, so we divide the compound words between the two words that make the compound word. So it's between the D and the S. We gotta divide it between the D and the S. We're going to draw a division line between the two words that make up the compound word. We have hand and shake. Okay, how do we code the first word? We're going to code the first word. I have a vowel followed by a consonant. I code it with a I have a A, a vowel consonant E, my vowel consonant E rule. Remember, we cross out the E, code it with a macron, 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 okay? And I also have a digraph SH, okay? Who can read this word? Hand shake, hand shake, okay? We're going to Divide this word between the two words that make up the one word. We have digraph OO. And then we have an I consonant E, the I consonant E rule. Vowel consonant E makes the vowel a long sound. So now we can say this as wood pile, wood pile. And then the last one, divide the word. Here are our two words. We have a vowel followed by a consonant, I code it with a breathe. Digraph SH. This L, I don't have to say it twice, so I cross out the second L. If you want to, you don't have to. We did in first grade, okay? We have digraph SH here. Here's a vowel followed by a consonant, I code it with a breathe. Now I can pronounce this word as sh, L, ish, shellfish, okay? So let's practice defining some other compound words. So echo this word, footprint. Okay, what is a footprint? The print of a foot, exactly. So echo this word, dark room. What is a dark room? A room that is dark, exactly. So this is usually where film is developed. Okay, echo this word, Bookshelf. What is a bookshelf? A shelf with books. Okay.
So on our worksheets today, we'll practice reading and defining some more compound words, but first let's practice spelling compound words. When you spell compound words, all you have to do is spell each word by itself and then put the two words together. Let's try this. Echo this word, toothbrush. We can, who can spell the first word in the compound word? T-O-O-T-H, tooth, right? Who can spell the second word in the compound word? Brush, B-R-U-S-H. You write them all together because it's a compound word. Two words make that made up one word. You write them right next to each other. And we have the word toothbrush. What is a toothbrush? A brush for your teeth, exactly. So compound words are usually defined as how they're written, okay? A wood pile, a pile of wood, okay? So let's go ahead, go to your new sounds and words, number one is, echo after me, himself. H-I-M, him, sorry for that crazy M right there. Self, S-E-L-F. Number two, bedtime. B-E-D-T-I-M-E which means time for bed, right? Himself, he's just by himself. Number three, campfire. Camp, C-A-M-P, fire, F-I-R-E. Okay, remember to practice spelling your high frequency words. Um, reading and spelling them, and write a couple of the words, not all of them, but a couple, there's only two lines, in complete sentences. Let's go to your worksheet. Here are some compound words. We have to put these words on these lines and make, let them make sense. So if, have you ever heard of a cook back? What's a cook back? Nope, cook tub? Nope, cook book? I have heard of a cookbook. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that word here, cook book, because that one makes sense. Horseback, hmm, I think so. Horseback, like horseback riding. Miss N's favorite thing to do. Horseback, bath tub, bath tub, lip mark, no, lip card, no, lip. Stick, lipstick. A book mark, yep. And a post card. Okay, not too hard, not too hard. Okay, so here's some lipstick right here. Here's a book mark right there, and there's a bath tub right there. Okay. Okay, here's a little bit longer um, paragraph, and it's talking about corn. We talked about corn today in science. Corn on the cob comes from a grass plant. It is picked from a big green plant. The plant stem is hard, like bamboo. The kernel is the seed that is planted to make more corn. There is dent corn, flint corn, sweet corn, popcorn, and wax corn. Most kids like popcorn best. We learned about these different corns this week in science, so that's pretty cool. So number seven, what kind of plant does corn grow from? Corn on the cob comes from a grass plant. Okay, it comes from a grass plant. There's the answer to question seven. Corn, now we have to restate the question. So corn grows from, or you could put the kind of plant corn grows from is a grass plant. There we go. The kind of plant 
born grows from the kind of plant born grows. I'm not making up any of these words. The only one I added was the the kind of plant corn grows from. And I added an S to there. So it would make sense. Grows from is a grass plant. Okay. What is the plant stem like? It is picked from a big green plant. The plant stem is hard like bamboo. So the plant stem is hard like bamboo. So what is the plant stem like? The plant stem is, you can put like, you can put is hard like bamboo or is like, Bamboo. And that was the answer to question eight. What part of the corn is the seed? The kernel is the seed. There we go. There's the answer to question nine. The kernel. Kernel, go back. Make sure you spell it correctly. Is the seed. What kind of corn do most kids like best? It says right here, most kids like popcorn best. If I'm writing in complete sentences, you should be writing in complete sentences. Most kids like Popcorn. Best. We have to start writing in complete sentences. Okay? In your best handwriting. This end kind of is rushing a little bit. I'm not writing my, my best. And this was the, the answer to question 10. I'm putting the numbers here so you guys would practice on how you would do a cold read, okay? I want you to practice putting where you found the answers to what question, really explain. Um, the cold reads are going to get a lot harder this year. So really try hard to practice, unwrap every chance you can. Okay, so here's the more compound words, the same thing we did on the front. Here's some more about corn. And so the, there's only two questions here. Okay, so make sure you do this side, read, be able to read the words, answer the questions correctly in a complete sentence. You only have one sentence to write on this side. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day.